You hear those little voices screaming, me, 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 me. I want that bit of worm. That's what can happen in this round of life. You find yourself born in a little nest of twigs, and you want a piece of worm. This is what becoming does to the mind. You take becoming in all kinds of places. As the Buddha said, you think about the animal kingdom and how, <coughs> how varied it is. Well, the mind is capable of a lot more than that, all kinds of things. This is why we have to train it, because otherwise the mind goes out of control. It can create a lot of damage for itself. And even as we train it, we have to be careful. There are all kinds of things that come up in the mind while you're trying to get it to calm down. You have to learn to say, nope, that's not what we're here for. Old memories, or sometimes people think they get psychic knowledge, and it can pull them away from the stillness of mind. In a really radical way. So whatever comes up, good, bad, indifferent, right, wrong, as you're getting the mind to settle down, you've got to say, nope, 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 because you realize it can take you all kinds of places. And when the mind wanders, it's not just the mind that wanders. When the time le comes to leave this body, and the mind's going to wander into a new body, depending on your karma, depending on which actions are strong at that point. So we want to make sure the mind is well trained so that its actions are good, it's under control, that your habits, at the very least, lead in a good direction. This is why we get the mind to be still, still, still. And then whatever comes up, you can step back from it and look at it and say, where does this go? Where does this come from? You want to see everything as part of a causal process, not get pulled along with the current. Last night we were talking about the floods in the mind. They're here all the time. So you've got to be very careful. Sometimes you think you'll just stip, stick your toe in the water for a little bit, and all of a sudden you find something comes along and carries away. Briefly, when I was in Thailand, I'd lived on the side of the river. And they told me about the number of people who had died in the river. That's why everybody was very careful about going down to the river. Sometimes something can come floating along under the river, and you don't know what it is, where it came from push you away, knock you, knock the breath out of you. That's the way it is with the currents of the mind. On the surface they may seem relatively harmless, but you get down into them and they can rip you away from whatever's good in the mind. So you've got to learn how to have a place where you can step back and just watch, 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 and not get involved. Then when you see where these things come from, you realize, okay, you don't need to go along with them, and you don't need to have this thing keep pushing out more and more currents. But until you get to that point, you have to be very careful about what the currents are doing, where they're coming from, where they're going. So this is why we need as much stillness of mind as we can muster, still but alert. So you can use that stillness to pull out of the currents and understand them for what they are.